Hey, I'm Jamie Waldron. I've done a few things in this life. Musician, ultra distance trail runner, author, but I do my nine to five as a whole animal sustainable butcher. I've had a chance to sample some of the best food and drink you can find. Well, we're here in Hamilton, Ontario to check out Johnny Blonde and what he's doing in his kitchen. Really excited to see what John's got cooking up for us. Hey, what's going on, Jamie? How are you? Good, man. Good to see you. Great to see you. The humble beginnings is the food truck. How? Why? It's just a fantastic way to get your name out there on the scene. You're at different events. You're basically driving a billboard around. I already had a mindset that was really rooted in kind of local and exposing kind of local businesses and local farmers to the rest of the people. Sometimes we could be at football games. We could be in places sometimes where people maybe not care as much about kind of what they're eating and we can bring that aspect of things to them. We make all of our own breads, we do all of our own roasted meats, our lettuce, our tomatoes, I mean these all come from local farmers, our chicken, we have to debone all of our own chickens every week because it's the only way that we can afford to sell uh, the great product that we are selling here. I feel a thousand times more pride in, in, in everything that we're doing here. I think a lot of people are, are talking the talk, but you're actually putting it into practice. And that translates into like huge amount of hours. You got a staff working for you. You're doing weddings, you're doing catering. Take me through the process of actually identifying a place where you're gonna be sourcing the product. There's the small local markets that happen on all, there's a couple of the three or four different markets that happen all over Hamilton. There's also a wicked place called the Mustard Seed. They actually do a lot of the legwork for everybody that really wants to start and become and stay local. They got pretty much a whole grocery store. They have listed everything, how many kilometers from the store. This product has certainly yielded the name of the farm, the name of the couple growing the, the lettuce or the beans or whatever it is that might be. At this time, today, what's like got you going? We're going to put 80,000 calories into people's bodies. This is energy that people go and get to live their life with. These are coming directly from farm ingredients. The son to the farmer, to me, to here, to giving it to people, and they get to, they eat this food and they go and live their life. They, they go back to their job and they need that energy to work their job so they can feed their kids. It's fun to get as crazy and fancy as you want, but I don't know if that gives me as much satisfaction as just, you know, feeding people great food that I know where the ingredients came from. Well, you're making some of the damn tastiest calories I've ever had, man. Why don't we uh, head back to the kitchen and see what you got? Sounds great, let's do it. All right, John, what are we making? I think we're just gonna warm up the people to something. Uh, this is a, a, a kind of a starter method of a, of a porchetta. More traditionally, a porchetta is a loin of pork with the belly attached. Uh, you've opted just to go with the straight up loin. We really take our time roasting this bad boy off. I like to get it marinated if I can for like at least two days. I'm just basically gonna just pinwheel this out and try to get as much uh, surface area as I possibly can for uh, the salt and the pepper and all the fresh herbs and the chilies that we're gonna, we're gonna put into this. The tenderness, it, it's dictated by the cut, it's dictated by the amount of salt, by um, how long we marinate it and how definitely, most importantly, how slow we roast it. Gotcha, I mean, this is a already notoriously tender cut uh, off the pig, so I mean, I can't imagine that it's gonna take like too awful long without some of those more traditional brazing cuts on it, like the belly or the shoulder, so. It takes about three hours at about 200, 225 degrees. The porchetta seems to be a staple on the menu, am I right? It's my favorite thing. It's something that I've, I've really wanted to push here. Like I said, super fresh, like you can see, super delicious. It's, all, it's like I said, just making stuff in house. I'm not trying to get really uber fancy with, with really anything here. Um, this is like simple meat, simple herbs, just really made deliciously. Um, and I'll show you guys one of these sandwiches. This is our lovely porchetta here. So this bread is still hot in my hand. You can see this has been comfy. This, this meat is just falling apart here. Got all kinds of beautiful flavors going on. Fresh arugula some house pickled cabbage and hot peppers. This is like a, a sweeter pickled cabbage and then finish it off with a little bit of sprouts, some hot peppers. And then you guys gotta do the, the final job on this, the favorite part, the devouring. Other than the porchetta, some of the other blondes you can try. The peachy blonde, a chicken sandwich with brie and red pepper peach chutney, and the blonde jerk, 
That's a coleslaw jerk sandwich. I, I don't need to know what's in it because I don't think we should divulge all your secrets, but how many things go into your jerk spice that you make fresh? Oh, my, my own personal jerk seasoning has over 21 different spices in it. The, the main thing is the time. You gotta spend three hours cleaning the time and that's it. It's the reason why they call it time is because it takes so long to clean it all up. Since we caught up with Johnny, he's added a second food truck. And if you don't run into him in town, you can always check him out at his kitchen on concession in Hamilton.